I mean, I'm a Jew, and we like to joke about everything, so I, my, my... Including the Holocaust. Here, yeah, the Holocaust. Welcome to News Beast. Today we're talking about rape jokes and Republican presidential candidates, which are not the same thing. Allison, uh, what's the story we have up on the site today? So Trisha Romano wrote a piece about rape jokes. Apparently they're appearing more and more in pop culture. Rain Wilson tweeted one that offended a lot of people. Also, uh, the series Two Broke Girls makes use of them. I think to some degree not in the best way, sort of in the low blow way. But basically what she's bringing up here is it is offensive in a knee-jerk way, but maybe there's something deeper going on, which is that we shouldn't be excluding any topic from, from humor mm -hmm. to sort of discover it, explore it, create a dialogue, maybe. Well, it's kind of interesting. I mean, I'm a Jew, and we like to joke about everything, so I, my, my Including the Holocaust. Here, yeah, the Holocaust. So my inclination is, like, the, the worse the subject, the better the joke, provided it's a funny joke. But it always makes me squeamish when we get into sort of litigating or negotiating what, what humor is appropriate and what isn't. I agree with you. I think that, you know, it's something, it's something to take seriously, of course, because there are a number of women, obviously, who've been raped before and men, too. But I think that... I don't know. It just seems like the kind of thing we don't want to go about litigating. And what is Trisha's ultimate point? Is that that there people are enjoying these things more? People are employing them more? Is anybody upset about it? I think people are upset about it. She did speak to one rape victim who was pretty upset about it. And yes. Says it's never, you know, it's yeah. never the right way to approach things. But that, I don't know. I think that you know there are some jokes that you know they actually. I don't know, they can teach people. People can start a dialogue. If we say you can't ever make a rape joke, you can't ever talk about rape, then yeah. we're saying, you know, we don't want to talk about this at all, so we're ignoring the fact that it's problematic. Yeah. Gosh, it's a thorny subject. Very you thorny. You don't want to make light of it, but on the other hand, people process things in different ways. And humor can be a great way to sort of introduce you to something you might not have known before. And speaking of humorous things, the Republican debate last night, what's your take on it? Well, I think I've seen about 35 hours of Republican debate so far, so... Yeah, Gail this, Collins column, which is so funny. She said that she's watched more Republican debates than she has two Downton seasons Abbey. of Downton Abbey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so what was the takeaway? Did any could anything new possibly happen? A little a few new things did happen. Uh, Rick Santorum was the front runner for the first time and he handled that not particularly well. Uh, he reminded us, I think, why we generally don't end up electing legislators and do end up uh, electing executives. Uh, he went on and on about uh, complicated earmark issues that nobody cared about. If we did, John McCain would be president. Um, and Mitt Romney did his, uh, his replacement level, totally steady thing, uh, got in his body blows, didn't try to do more than that, and came out looking strong going into to Michigan. Which and Newt Gingrich is going to lower gas prices, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, well, Gingrich is no longer even really pretending to run for president. I think he, he formally... <laughs> gave up last night, and you, you could feel that in, in his new, kinder approach. So how many more of these do we have to endure? This may have been the final debate. Oh my goodness. We'll see. Um, if, if I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I don't see it. All right, in the spirit of last night's Republican debate, where I believe the candidates were asked to give one word to encapsulate themselves, let's give one word to encapsulate the status of the Republican contest. Allison. Boring. <laughs> As expected. That's two words, but I'll take it. And I'm going to go with Newt Gingrich and say cheerful. That's cheerful. all from us at Newsbeast. We'll see you tomorrow.